Today we have Hope Mullen with us. She is uh, one of the storied educators here at HRA, Halifax Regional Arts. Uh, she was a music teacher for many years. She was a, uh, she's still an organist for many years. And she's currently, I actually work with her uh, with the Vocal Coaching Group, one of the many online groups that uh, Halifax Regional Arts has assembled during the pandemic to try and keep bringing opportunities to kids. And uh, we're really glad to have her with us today. And she brought some compositions. Uh, we wanted to start by asking, you know, how did you get started learning music? Well, I got started learning music with my parents. They both were pianists. And they raised their six children with playing the piano. And then I decided I wanted to be a school music teacher. And after that, I think I learned a great deal. Well, particularly in the last maybe 20 years, not so much when I started teaching, which is so long ago, I don't want to scare you. <laughs> um, now it's more student directed. And I learn, and I still do learn. I, I learned so much from my students. I'd say particularly out in Waverly, I, uh, we started writing songs out there. I remember in about 19, oh my goodness, about 1984 maybe, it just happened. I don't know how it happened, it just happened. We started making up a little poem in grade four music, I believe, and then a child's da da dee da dee da dee da We'll play a game, then we'll watch fame. And fame was a TV big show in those days. I thought we're starting something, we're composing. And it just took off. And ever since then, I always composed with my kids. They would make up poems and tunes and always try to encourage them. And I, I made up little booklets. I, I mean, this is going way back. This is Waverly Memorial where I taught 14 years. And I just, all these beautiful songs that the kids made up. And then we draw, they draw pictures and. I put them together in every school I ever taught in. After that came Smoky Drive. Smoky Drive in Sackville. We made up a lovely book. Lots of colorful songs that the kids made up. Look at that. Spring is here, spring is here. I like to play in the spring. Grade one. <laughs> and then we get down to, oh my goodness. I went to Glen Moyer School in Bedford and Bedford South. I, I could just, uh, I'm just with, with red maple leaf. That is the color of our flag. I went to uh, Duke Tan Danville and had a wonderful 12 years there. One of the best songs I had my, my students come up with was the Schooner Lorinda. You might remember back in, I don't know what year it was, 1991 maybe. No, 2003, sorry. <laughs> Hurricane Juan struck Halifax, and I read in the paper about this Lorinda that had had a terrible tragedy happen to it down at the waterfront. All the water came in, and Captain Mon had spent, I think, 25 years building this boat. And I thought, what is, what? we made up a poem in grade four, I believe it was. Oh, grade three. Made up a poem in grade three, and then I said, now who would like to make a tune? She sank to the bottom, the schooner Lorinda. She sank to the bottom by the dock. And I'll never forget Cameron Taylor. She sank to the bottom by the dock. That's the tune. And I, this song was sung by a lot of my students and it was sung by Starlight Choir. And they loved it. It told the whole story about the Lorinda and what happened and how the captain went down to get his photographs and little heirlooms. And then he had to be pulled out by the crew with a human chain. His wife was frantic. It was quite the story. So that was one of the highlights of my career, having the schooner Lorinda song. Um, so you started, if I can recap, you started playing music. There was one, you were one of six children and both your parents played piano. And so you were taught piano as a child. And did you sing together as a family as well? Was it just piano? What, what did music look like in your... It's mostly piano. And we played in church because my dad was a Presbyterian minister. So <laughs> we all had to sing in church. But we were never, we were not encouraged to play by ear. It was all classics and hymns. And, and yet my older brother, Paul, he could play by ear. He had a terrific gift. 
and he would listen to the hit parades, particularly Elvis Presley. And then he'd sit down at the piano and rock out when my parents were out at church because they didn't like that kind of music, all right? And I listened to him and I thought, oh, he's playing, he's got no music. We couldn't afford to buy the records or the music, you know, but on the radio we'd hear it. And I thought, I, maybe I could do that too. So I'd start playing by ear some too. And, and I think playing by ear and making up songs and things is very important, but I was not encouraged in that vein. And I didn't start till a lot later about writing songs myself. And I attribute it really to my brother and my students. They brought that out in me. I wanted to make sure to ask, uh, so how did you get uh, pulled into the church organ? Because, you know, it's a pretty special instrument. Well, with that piano background, you can really go on to organ. And I uh, received a phone call from Valerie Campbell, who was then the music director at First Baptist Church Dartmouth. She asked me if I'd like to come and play the organ. Well, actually, their organist was quite ill. Um, so I, I thought, well, it sounds like an opening. I, I wasn't that good on the organ then, but I was willing to practice. So I went over there and it was 2000, um, year, it, was, it was March. I played and, and I just practiced a lot on several days a week and I, every Saturday. So I, I spent a lot of time, you know, practicing and playing for the choir. I was the organist at that point. Well, I don't, I hadn't taken many lessons actually. I'd only taken a year with Fred Graham though at the cathedral way back. And I just um, went on to accompany the choir too, the church choir. I just loved it. I loved playing the organ and I loved um, accompanying the choir and the soloists, you know. Thanks. That's, and did you do that? That was from, you said from 2000 that you did that for several years. Is that correct? I did that from 2000 and I'm still doing it, but the church was sold. Okay. And they moved out in January of 2021. So they did not take the organ, but you know, and that was ugh, a real heartbreak for me. Uh, however, they gave the organ to another church. So that organ is not just sitting there unused, okay? And I only wish the people of the church well, you know, they, they're gonna have a new church. Uh, I felt badly at the time, but I'm, I'm learning to, it's just like, I think a lot of losses have come through COVID and we just have to go forward, work through them. The compositions that we're gonna hear tonight, uh, do you wanna tell us a little bit about Lowe's? You told me they came from a collection that you had done. Mm -hmm. Well, I wrote quite a few songs between 1985 and 1990. Okay, I just had a, a creative spurt then. And a lot of them were about animals. And so um, I had them taped professionally, Kurt Hahn, and I had a little tape, it was called Riding on the Ferry to PEI. And all the animals were on the ferry because I loved going to PEI, that's where I was born and my mom and dad retired there. So, and some of the animals, well, we had the the giraffe and he's up there and, and the hippopotamus. And I had a, a elephants, I, I love my, I must say, I, I, I love animals. So, and preserve, protecting them is so important and for children to do that. So they're children's songs, basically. This song here is just a couple of years ago. And I saw this in the paper about the cat, Skippy, who was, I think, they think he was captured by an owl. So I went to the dollar store and got my little owl and the cat. And have you heard about the cat and the owl? The cat and the owl, the cat and the owl. Have you heard about the cat and the owl over in Lawrence Town? And I went on for about 13 verses and the kids acted it out. I remember the Bravo boys, they had a great time acting it out. <laughs> so that was one of my last songs, okay. So I haven't really felt the creative spurt too much during this COVID, sorry. I'm hoping I will start feeling it again. No, that's okay. So the compositions, the, the, the collection that you did and that you recorded, um, how many pieces are there in total? How many different animals? Um, I think there's about 10 animal songs. And there's a couple of historical ones. I, I wrote one, Fathers of Confederation. It required quite a bit of research into history <laughs> about how Canada was formed, the history of it. And now I would say Mothers of Confederation too. I'd say Fathers of Confederation, we look back to you for a charming charlatan, a vision you pursued. 
Mothers of Confederation. I won't go on, but anyhow, I would because without the fathers, without the mothers, there weren't the fathers. <laughs> and so yeah, back then it wasn't the big issue, but now I would if yeah. I could change it. Well, that's nice that we can kind of, we, it's nice to be able to look back and, re, you know, change things as we have that appreciation now. Mm -hmm. So was that, was that a song in, in That's the on the collection, right. Okay. Uh, I haven't, uh, Kurtan made me a CD, but I haven't had it like distributed or anything like that. And I don't think they're making CDs now anyhow, but um, I have done a few other ones too. I wrote a song about Helen Creighton because I was always intrigued with her and I thought children in school should learn about her. So I thought, why not? You know, there's lots of songs she found, but I felt led to make up one too. And about Helen coming over to Devil's Island and with her, I'd say her red wheel barrow. <laughs> Here comes Helen Creighton looking for a song. So I just went on with, a, you know, quite a few verses you could act out. So in the in the, in the compilation of compositions that we'll hear tonight, you're gonna, we'll hear a few of them. In that, which one was your favorite? Well, actually, probably my favorite, which I didn't give you, is Elephants. It's kind of rocky. <laughs> but I, I do like Herman Baby Hippo because it's very gentle. It's like a lullaby. Children could maybe go to sleep with that song. Is there anything, any oh. sort of inspiration with the polar bear? Well, I just, you know, I started reading how the ice was melting and everything, even back when I wrote that song back in the late 80s, you know, and how the polar, you know, I said, scrape away the snow and go outside of your den. Well, I don't even know if they have dens anymore, <laughs> you know, so it's so important. And I think there was some polar bear expert just passed away recently. He'd spent all his life researching polar bears. So I think the song, I think they're very relevant still. So I wanted to ask you, you've transitioned into online education as all the teachers in the province have. How have you found uh, working online with the vocal coaching group that you direct? Well, I really love doing vocal coaching. And a lot of it is because of you, Gus. Because I don't have to worry about the technology. You get the kids on and you're very talented. You can play the piano, the organ, and you're also into technology, which I'm not. So it's been a joy to see, hear, hear those children too. We have some wonderful singers. There's only like 11 kids. Well, we had up to 15, but some of them, like I let them sing alone if we get a song. Now who would like to sing that alone? And the hands go up and then the voices that we hear are truly inspiring. 
So it's not as good as the choir, but it's it's pretty good. <laughs> the opportunity. Yeah, and then we're working on a virtual choir, which we'll get to see here next month. So uh, that'll be nice to sort of showcase that a bit as well. And again, Gus, that's you putting it all together. I can't imagine the hours and the skills to do that. So thank you. And Hope, we've heard so many beautiful things that you've shared uh, just over a long, long, long legacy of teaching. You've certainly made a huge impact and on, on so many students' lives. If there's something you've learned over the years that you'd want to pass on to young people now? I would say, especially if you like the arts, go for it. You know, if you are, if you feel that you want to take lessons or just even learn on your own, do it. Because it's a great outlet in life. It's a hobby and it's an outlet emotionally and spiritually, physically. So follow your dreams. Thanks. And kind of following up on that, if I can ask one more question along that lines. Um, how would you describe that music's impacted your life on a personal level? Totally. It's just, yeah, totally. It's, it's a gift from the greatest of all composers. That's how I believe. And it's just, it's given me form and shape and purpose, purpose in my life. Right now, I, you know, I'm doing a little bit of online videoing for my church on the piano. But, you know, you miss the people. You miss going to church. You, you miss the fellowship, you know. So, um, but it's just all my life, you know. I've been able to play places and made a career out of teaching music in Nova Scotia. HRA and H, first of all, it was HRCE I was with for years in many schools that I I, it was just a career for me. It wasn't all easy, believe me. Oh, you're an entertainer, you know. But being around kids, I just really enjoyed that so much. Is there anything we haven't asked you that you would want, that you would wish we had asked? No, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for including me. This means a great deal to me, and it's perked my spirits right up because I think we can get down a little bit down, you know, at this time of history. So. Just I want to say the magic word. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your music and for everything you do for the community and for HRA and the students. Oh, I do want to thank my three supervisors too, Paula, Nathan, and Pam. A big thank you. So encouraging. And they, they're so helpful to us music teachers. Music is alive and thriving in Nova Scotia. Not everywhere, but here. Thank you, administration. Thank you, Hope. Thank you so much. You're welcome.